Welcome back to Python scripting for ArcGIS applications, NRM 638, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we'll work with string variables. So go to Programs, ArcGIS, Python 2.7, and start IDLE, or your favorite Python editor. OK, we're going to make a string variable. So I'll just make a string variable so we could test what is the type of that variable. So it is a string variable. OK, so string variables consist of characters. And the characters are indexed starting with position 0. So what we could say is, what is the length of this string variable by using the length function? So len is a function to get the length of some object, and the object is our string variable. So it has 12 characters. So to see the first six characters, we would use square brackets and then show us character. The first character is index 0, and then up to the seventh would give us six characters. So here are our six characters. This would be index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4, 5, and 6. So for example, show us alt p to call previous command. This time show us 0 through 2. So it shows us characters 0 and 1. So that's called slicing. And that's basically how we can extract characters from strings. OK, so here's how we could slice starting with the first character and up to but not including the last five characters. So that's what it returns. Well, the original variable contains those characters. And we might say, well, give us all characters, just the last four characters. So Alt P to recall my command, and I would just change this to a negative four. So that basically will show us the last four characters. And the last four characters are indeed 2015. OK, we might want to take this string variable and grab the year from that string variable and convert it into an integer. This is a fairly common operation. So what we could do is we could say year is going to be equal to our string variable and grab the last four characters and then convert that to an integer. So we can use the int function to convert that into an integer. And then what's in the variable called year, 2015, and what is the type of that variable? So it is indeed an integer variable. OK, the one thing that's special with string variables is a backslash is typically interpreted as a special character. So for example, we might have something like my folder equals C colon backslash NRM 638. That backslash is going to be interpreted as a special character. And a backslash N means new line to the Python interpreter. So if I print my folder, it sees this backslash N and interprets that as a new line and basically puts a new line in right there. So that's one thing we have to keep in mind when we're working with folder names or paths is backslashes are typically interpreted as special characters. Another example might backslash T is interpreted as a tab character. So how do we deal with that? Well, there's three ways we could deal with it. We could say my folder equals C colon forward slash NRM 638. And that will work. Basically, we have that. Or we could say my folder equals C colon double backslash NRM 638. And that will work. Alt P to recall my command. So now that's what's inside that. So this will be interpreted correctly as a correct path. And then the last way we could do it is as a raw string. So a raw string, control C, copy, control V, paste. If you put a little R in front of your string, that basically means don't interpret the backslash as special characters. So now if we look at my folder, that's what's inside my folder, and that will work as a path. 
So there's three ways basically for dealing with these special characters when you're dealing with paths. One would be a double backslash, another one would be R for raw string, and then the third would be in your paths have a forward slash rather than a backslash. Okay. String variables are objects, like most things in Python are objects, and objects can have many properties and methods. So if you put in a dot, the interpreter will list all the properties or methods that are available to that object. So in this case, I put in a dot, and here's an index. So index is a function which will return position of a character in that string variable. So for example, is there a character called n in this string variable? So we're going to do lowercase n. So it says it's at position 3. So that would basically be position 1, position 2, position 3. So then we could say my folder it's at position three. There's that little n. So that's just one of many functions that's available in the Python object when the object is a string variable. Now let's say if we said my folder, the alt p index and search for a capital N, which is not in this string variable, I get an error. So it basically said it did not find that. Where they use uh, try and accept which basically says try this, and if it doesn't work, do this. So that would be try. And then once again, everything that's indented is inside this try statement because we see this colon. So try this, and then we would say accept. If that does not occur, we could print whatever you want to print. Capital N is not in string variable my folder. Okay, so then we'll execute this by pressing enter twice. So what happens is it did try this. There was an error that substring was not found, so it this was the exception, and this is printed because it did not successfully execute this statement. So then basically accept if this is not correctly execute, then print capital N is not in string variable in my folder. Okay, another function that we could use if we press in dot to list all the functions that are available to this object is count. So go to this string and give us how many times the character six is in this string variable. So it occurs once in this string variable. Okay, there's other functions that will allow you to convert strings. So, for example, we might want to convert this string to all uppercase. So, I'll just say test string equals my folder. Dot, and then there's going to be a function called upper. So I press the down arrow key until I see that function. And then if we look at test string, it's now all uppercase. There's also a function that will test is a string all uppercase. So that would be our test string dot, and then the function is 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 this string uppercase? And it returns true that that string is all uppercase. You can convert it to a lowercase, so dot, and then it'll list all the functions available for that object, and there should be a function called lower. So then if we look at test string two, it's all lowercase. And then there's another function called title, which basically capitalizes the first word in a string. So then we could say title string equals a string two dot title. So basically it capitalized this and capitalized that as words in this string. Another thing we could do is use the function starts with. So test string dot, and we'll see the functions and properties available for that object. And there should be one pressing the down arrow key starts with. So does this string start with the character UTM? And it's true. So these functions that return true or false, you can use in if statements. So if it's true, do something, and if it's not true, do something else. 
So for example, this if statement, we could say if a string starts with, and then we'll do a colon, and then everything indented underneath that will be executed if this is true. So I could say print string starts with UTM, whatever you want, and then print whatever you want, okay. And then press return twice, and that will be executed. So this was true, so therefore it executed these two print statements. So let me change my test string, and then we'll go Alt-P to recall our command, and then execute it. So this time it's not true, so that doesn't get executed. And we could do, if it's not true, we can say otherwise print. So basically this if and this else should be lining up together and then anything indented under them will be executed. So if this is true, print this out. Otherwise, print this out. Okay, the other thing we could do is use the replace function so in this case, we could say, okay, go to this test string and replace characters GCS with new characters UTM and then put the result in this new string variable. So test string in this case was GCS NAD83 and UTM string, which was created using this replace function is UTM NAD83. Okay, so that's enough about strings. If you go to the Blackboard website, there's a quiz question for you that will lead you to the next video session when you successfully answer that quiz question.